Good afternoon, everybody. Um, just going to give you a couple of um, my experiences uh, working as a construction director and using the PwC contract. A number of people have mentioned about the original intent or assumed intent of the contract, which was value for money, cost certainty, programme certainty, and a reduction in disputes. All very noble aims. Has it delivered? And can it deliver in its present format? I'll leave the answer to later. The contract, as I said, is based on the assumption that all design work has been completed prior to tender. Almost without exception of what I've seen, this has not happened. And in many cases, we hear of design teams being told by awarding authorities to issue projects to tender, for other reasons, uh, despite the design being far from complete. Before the project is even awarded, it is in trouble. On transfer of risk, an unfair transfer of risk, in my view, and one I will, uh, I will uh, refer to as the ground and services risks, which a number of other people have commented on, are being passed on to the contractor with minimum site investigation and the contractor not being allowed to carry out any of his own investigation while tendering. This is where design teams may have four or five years' knowledge of the project and the contractor is given four weeks to work out what other people haven't worked out. And a recent project was involved in, the services risk was passed to us as contractor. And immediately on completing, commencing work on site, services, telecom services were uncovered and we sought direction. Of course, there was weeks of delay while nobody would decide what to do. Eventually, we were told, cut the cables. And we asked why, because we don't know what to do. But the services are connected to the hospital. We still don't know what to do, and we'll have to take the risk. You might cut off the theatre, but so what? We'll chance it. So we cut the cables. Luckily, nothing too major went wrong. But we, as contractor, are deemed to know all about that and price it in the tender. Of course, you can't do it, and of course, there will be a dispute over it. And not alone that, but we have lost time. And surely the use of a provisional sum, as we had in the older form of contracts, to cover a situation that cannot be foreseen would have reduced the delay and reduced the cost and avoided all the confrontation. On the delay thresholds, if the design has been completed as per the intent of the contract, and I would uh, disagree with Jonathan at one point he made that uh, it's not intended to be full design, but uh, he put up some wording that uh, quoted as verbatim as I can, that's sufficient to price the job and to construct the works. I think if you're to be able to construct the works at tender stage, then it would be deemed that you have the full design. But where the, if, the, if the design had been completed as per the intention of the contract, then why are delay thresholds needed? And in recent times, the tendency has been to increase delay thresholds, and in some cases have seen up to 60 days on a 12-month contract, and all in an attempt to overcome the shortfalls in the tender documents and the inflexibility of the current contract. And while the client may feel that they have any potential delay covered, they're missing the point that if 60 days of delay becomes due to the contractor, then substantial issues or changes must have occurred for the contractor to be entitled to the 60 days. And these issues or changes will be the source of cost increase and dispute. And the project is 60 days late. So where is the programme or cost certainty that was the intent of the original contract? And the project execution, the success of any project, is dependent on a number of things. Good design and a good design team, a competent contractor, and a good supply chain, all of which have been mentioned and probably most of all, teamwork and collaboration. But the Public Works contract does not encourage teamwork. In fact, the opposite is true, and a number of people have referred to that already. It demands that both parties to the contract must do X, Y and Z within so many days or else. There is no room for flexibility or collaboration. If, for example, an issue arises which might cause delay, I as contractor have to issue proper notice within so many days or else I lose my entitlement. Once this notice is issued, the client's team immediately goes into defence mode, the option of working out a solution to the betterment of the project without formal notice is not there. 
and variations and reverting to my earlier point about the contract operating and the basic assumption that design has been fully completed prior to tender, there is no provision for any contingency and therefore no budget for variations. And while this might seem to be a good thing in principle, the reality is that apart from the variations resulting from incomplete design and unforeseen conditions, the architect inclined may wish to make changes for a number of reasons to better the end product, to modify the build and to meet current requirements. And remember, many of the tender designs are years out of date and upgrade some elements of the work to reduce life cycle costs. But the lack of any contingency and the rigid nature of the contract leaves this very difficult. And I've seen many examples where we as a contractor know we are building an element or area of the project does, that does not meet the client's current needs and would be altered after substantial completion with funding coming from another budget. And I'll end at this point. And on one recent design and build project, a whole floor was completed as per the work's requirements in the full knowledge of all involved that it would be substantially altered after substantial completion. And this was done. The minute we complete the building, the client brought in their own team under another budget and uh, demolished it and rebuilt it. And as a result, of course, the client lost all warranties in that area of the building. So, so much for cost certainty and programme certainty. Thank you.